You were born in the country, you're living in America, and you want to send guns to your country to destabilize your country? We're going to a few fort. This is the Larry Schuss Road going to the main highway. On both sides of the road you can see bananas and there was a time around when I was 15 years old I used to pass around here and the, the place had irrigation system so you had to time the, the irrigation the overhead for you not to get wet and right now the people own the farms and there is not one line not one pipe nothing under these bananas so instead of going forward, people go backward, they regress, they regress. So this is the end of the large road. You're going to go left to go to Viewfort. Right will take you to Castries. Left will go to Viewfort. Right will take you to. Left will go to Viewfort. Right will take you to Castries. So this area here is called um, Boskedo, that's the Boskedo Bridge. Boskedo Bridge. Approaching Lakai right now. We are approaching Lakai. This is Lakai here. On the left is where the old Lakai police station, old Lakai police station used to be. On the right there is a development there where Clico, Clico bought these lands and they developed, they put houses. But um, they are, most of, there's still a lot of property available for sale. Last time when I called them on behalf of somebody, things was not, they were not selling at that time. So this is the stretch of road here where they, I told you about that 15 million euro project. They planted, they, they, I think they planted some plants, horticultural plants along the left side of the road. It looked like most of them dead already. So now, If you go left, you can walk through to go to Foda. This is Mount Tamawe, the lower part of the hill, and the upper part is Mount Van. So the left is where the Foda National Park. Foda National Park. You can also access the Foda Beach. The left. Yeah. So
to the right is a development. There's a development, some housing development there. And there's the Adventist church to the right. So we are approaching the Henry Fire Station. The Henry Fire Station, we are approaching that. These houses on the left were some houses for maybe the tourists and other places to come and get refreshments. On the left is the fire service. All right. Towards the right, there is a development area there. There are some houses there. Still moving right along. But people, at this time of the year, you have to be very careful when you're driving in this place because you get a lot of drunk drivers around Christmas time and you get people who are coming from overseas who are happy to be in St. Lucia drinking and driving and you can find yourself in, in a lot of trouble on this road in accidents with drunk drivers. Now, in this area there have been a few, um, few sightings of snakes crossing the road. So to the left we have the, the infant school, the primary school, the secondary school, all on the left. And then the, poli the police station, the Henry police station is on to the left. To the right, you have a few houses there. Uh, communications and works just after the police station on the left. So that's the four road junction going to Bell Fashions area, the left going to the Denry village prop the village. So that's Mr. Mongrew's place on the left. Uh, multi, it's a variety store and you also sell agricultural um, agricultural inputs equipment and things like that Mongrew you have to pay me for advertising your place Yeah, so we are approaching the, how do you call it, the Mandeli? Is that the right word? But the building, the little bit, the buildings on the left side, they were, they were actually um, tourist attraction, people to come for refreshments and things like that on the left side. So you can see some tourists. From here, you have a magnificent view of Denry Village. You can see the church and all of these places. The church looks very nice from the top up here and the other places in the village. Now, approaching on the right is the Bodily Prison. Bodily Prison, they call it Bodily, bodily Correctional Facility or whatever. I don't, I, don't, I don't see anything correctional about this place. It's just a place to house prisoners, man. What, do, what rehabilitative or corrective um, ventures or projects, programs you have there? Now, one time I was passing around here in the night, and by the time I, I saw the snake in the road, the snake hit the, my vehicle. When I went back, I turned in the Bodley Junction to come back to see what was going on, and I didn't see the snake. The snake just suddenly, when I realized what was going on, the snake had done hit the vehicle. It was in the night. So it's about 
twice I saw snakes in the night in this area here. Yeah, so people, we're going to Viewfort. We're going to Viewfort. We are actually going to the Viewfort Airport, Iranora International Airport. So here is um just before Puff Oale. I I really do not know the proper the, the how they really call it, but this is this area is just before Puale. And this place is heavily, 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 heavily infested with that federal snake, the poisonous snake. Heavily. Heavily, heavily, heavily. I tell you heavily. Heavily infested with the poisonous one. So you have to be careful when you walk in here. If you ever have to walk here, try to avoid walking at the side of the road if you don't have to, close to the side, uh, side to the edges. Especially in the early mornings and in the evenings, is that the wrong time to be walking here and walking close to the edge of the road. You have to be observant, really watch through the, through the grass. Evening time and early morning, no, it's not good time. The sun is about to set, people, as you can see. The sun is about to set. Now, as you know, this, in this area there was supposed to be a hotel called La Paradis Hotel. It started, the construction started, you can see there, was, there are some houses that they actually started building. But it is a shame to see all of those things going into disrepair because the project was stopped. I'm sure I, based on what I'm hearing, it, it looks like it's a financial, financial problem with that project financial stronghold financial stronghold And the people were, pre were, were prepared to divert the road and all of that. Boy, I tell you, when people come here and they say they want to build hotels, the government bend down backward, back flip, lie down on their back to cater to these people. But they, 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 they will not try to cater for serious people from the country who want to do something. Once you don't have a big name and fame, people don't want to hear you. People don't want to hear you. They will give the Chinese large expanses of land for 99 US cents per acre per year. But you, the lotion, in these same areas, they would rent it to you for 400 US per acre. The Chinese get it for 99 cents per acre. Boy, these people are selling you, selling the country, selling the people. <laughs> but the most amazing thing, this is Poilin, people, Poilin. Poile, poile, poile. Poile all the way. The most amazing thing is, is when guys do nothing, really nothing remarkable for the people, but then the people are the ones who clamor, who curse, insult, and disrespect people on, this, on behalf of these politicians. When you're in a country and the same problem repeats itself, the same healthcare problem, the doctors frustrated, the nurses frustrated, 
there are people frustrated and election after election they vote when people, a lot of the people who vote in this place i don't really know what these people voting for they vote in defense and in support of a political party who really do not care about them because in a number of cases when these politicians are sick they do not even re, um, really use the resources of the country they fly out to other countries any simple thing they want to go overseas for treatment living a bad and dilapidated um, healthcare system for the people who clamored for them anyway this is um mon repo here climbing that hill in mon repo what's the name of that hill i'm not sure is it mon jab i'm not sure but that's a hill approaching mon repo that's how i just categorize it there was a tire shop on the right side there i see it i don't know if it's still open yeah, this is Monrepo people. Monrepo. Mopo. Now on the right there, there's a road that leads up there towards, is that they call it Lomba? But there's a place on that side there where they make nice furniture, man. They make furniture in that place there. I always like to see places like that, you know, manufacturing things in the country where people can get employed. I always look out and respect people who can create employment for the people. I always look forward to that. I want to see more businesses, more, more, more factories, more places of employment in the country. That's what I'm clamoring for. That's what I want. That's what I need. These things make me happy. When I see people creating things that, are that can employ people, you understand? That's what we want in the country. Now some of them, some people in the country, when they have their money, they will buy nice ride, new for the $150,000, $140,000 for the. But if there are people who will buy an ordinary vehicle and invest the money in a business, and then you all get jealous of the people when they start making progress in life. Yeah. I defend the poor a lot in the country. But some of the poor people, they are bad-minded and they bring poverty on their own selves. And some of them get jealous of the people who are trying. There are certain people who are staying with other things that you all play around with. You all buying shoes for $400. And you all don't have a house? Eh? You don't have to have a big house. All you need is a, you can, a small house where you can, where, with, where, as some people say, take two hundred dollars. Maybe first to do it, two hundred Some people, their money is just to buy nice and expensive vehicles. You all don't make, no, some of them, they make no sacrifice in the country. You have to sacrifice. You have a lot of young fellows on the block these days not doing nothing. They don't make no sacrifices. Their hands nice and, and, and their fingernails clean. When you look at the hand, they, them people's hands, even those in the rural areas, some of these young boys, their hands are clean. They do not work. And they have enablers, their mothers. Encourage them. Give them free meals a day. Big 20-something-year-old boys. 27 year old men not looking for work they are not sick they're not on wheelchairs they're not working they refuse to work because their mothers their mothers a lot of women in this country encourage their children to commit crime you all don't let them work and even when you all know some of your women even when you all know they're stealing people things they're committing crimes you all behave like you all do not know. You all defend them. You all clamor for them. When people are asking you all to warn your children, you all are very defensive, some of you women. And when they are shot and killed by the same, by their own peers and their compadres and the people in just like them, you go on the national TV and you say, 
He was a good boy. He was a good boy. He was a good boy to you and you only. But he was a menace to the country. You all need to talk to your children. Talk to them. Tell them go and find a job. And some of the people overseas, they have their, their some parents overseas. They have their children. You are nobody asking you not to love your children, but you spoil them. Every month you send money for these guys and they don't want to work. And some of the money that you are using for them to send to them, some of them is to buy guns that some of you all know. Some of these people know. Some of you all know that your children are committing crime. Some of you all know that your children are killing people in the country. Some of you all know that your children are using guns to go and steal from businesses. Some of you all know that your children are doing those things. But you cover up for them. You cover up for them. And when the fruits of the labor come to them, when chicken come home to roost, you all come on television and say, yeah, your son was a good boy. He was not good. We pass ESCAP on the left, a development area where there are some nice houses. Some people build some nice houses there. Yeah. Some celebrities in America have houses up there too. I'm not going to mention names. Yeah, so we approaching Miku people, Miku, Miku Kabayoku. Miku Kabayoku, we approaching Miku, my people. Miku Kabayoku. There's uh, some construction taking place. Construction taking place, people. Miku Kabayoku. Yeah, as I was telling you, man, when you in this, when you around Christmas time, you have to be careful, because there are a lot of fellas drunk, 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 drunk driving, drunk, and they driving, and also sometimes you have fellas come from America and England. Some of them, 10, 15 years, they never come to Saint Lucia. So when they come here, they happy. They come in and rent vehicles, and they drunk, and they causing problems too. There are some, there have been some people who come to Saint Lucia, Saint Lucians come to St. Lucia on holiday around Christmas time and they died in accidents. So we have to be careful when our people tell them when they come, be careful. Don't be drinking and driving. Because when you're in America and England, especially America, you, you don't drink and drive. Because you know they'll catch you for DUI and you know the ramifications. But when you come into your country, you want to do it. Respect our country. And also, some of you, when you all go to, this is as I told you, this is Miku. Some of you are living in St. Lucia and go to um, America and England and then places. That's the gas station there. That's one of the gas stations on the left. To the right is the Miku police station and the fire station the next to each other. Do you know that a long time ago, the police, the, the, there was no separate police station and fire station. They were just one. A police was also a firefighter. Do you know that how it was before? Do you know? Do you know? Do you remember? Or even if you remember, you were not born yet or you were not around, ask your parents, ask your grandmother. But that's how it was. That is how it was. To the left, that's the Miku playing field. That's the secondary school over there to the left also. All right. And that other left road, you see there, the road going to the left, that takes you to the village, just like the first one by the gas station. All right, all right. And to the right is Leon's place. That bridge here, that bridge, I think that, that was one of the biggest rivers, you know. It was known as probably one of the biggest rivers in the country. To me, that's what I remember. I'm not sure. All right. That road to the right, it will take you to places like Tiroche Miku, Tiroche, Giga, and these places, the one on the right. All right. What is this guy doing? What, what is this man doing on the road, boy? Yeah, the road on the right will take you to Tiroche and Giga. 
So as, as you know, we're going straight, all right? Yeah, I was saying that there are people in St. Lucia who live here. When they were in St. Lucia, they were not respecting our laws. They were not respecting nothing we had. They were throwing rubbish in the rivers. All kind of foolishness they were doing. When you ask them not to do these things, they wouldn't listen to you. But when them people went to America, they started following all the, all the rules, all the laws in America. Even when they go to Martinique, just close to us, they follow all the rules, all the laws. But when they were here, they were not following the rules. Then when they come up on a vacation, they come to St. Lucia, they now want to criticize St. Lucia and nothing you have here is good for them. When they were here, they were the biggest polluters, you know. Now when they went to a New York, they have to separate the garbage, put aluminum in a separate place, put plastic in a different place, bottles, breakables in a different thing. They comply. They follow the rules in America very well. But when you come to St. Lucia, these guys were pull heavy polluters, breaking our laws, messing around. And then they spend a few years in America and then they want to come and tell you nothing you have in St. Lucia is good. Let me tell you something. I respect our people who are in America and England because these people contribute a lot to, um, to I think, to, to, the, to, our, to our economic stability because every year, we, based on our study, I saw a report, we just get around 46 million US million 46 million us people working in america sending money to the country so that helping people a lot that helping the economy a lot and i respect them for that because i don't know what would have happened in st lucia if these people in america and those places were not sending money to their family and their people around christmas time a lot of barriers come in from america helping the people in their situation i welcome that i respect that God bless them for that. Oh, wow. I was saying, some of the people, I want to thank people who are in America and those places because they send money to St. Lucia and help their families, help the local economy. I was looking at something where it says around $46 million around 46 million dollars coming to the country from America people sending money to their family and thank God for that because these things help us these things help the local economy a lot okay but I have a problem when these people who are in America come here and they criticize everything they say they see in the country you all should know that it is a third world country we have there. We, this is a third world country. We do not have all the resources that America has. This is so probably the reason why you went to America to get a better life because it probably was not possible here. But some of you people who are in America, some of you all, when you all were here, you all were the biggest polluters. You all used to throw rubbish in our rivers and all of that. And when we warned you all, you would not hear. But when you went to New York, they had you put in, um, put in your rubbish, your bottles in a separate bin, your disposable, your plastics in a something else, your breakables in something else. And you never complain because they were going to charge you. But when you were in St. Lucia, some of you all, you were throwing rubbish in our rivers. All right, we understand that. But when you, when you go, when you go to America and you come back here on holidays, remember it's a third world country. Remember you come into a place that don't have all the resources that you were exposed to in America. I don't want to hear you coming here and criticizing everything we do and everything we have in the country. That is bad. All right, because some of you, when you were in the country, you all were giving a lot of trouble. You all gave us a lot of trouble here. All right? So when God bless you, and you get a chance, and you go to America, 
Thank God. Thank God for that. I can understand there are certain things that will prostrate you sometimes. But don't come, on, don't come here and criticize everything you see. When I was a young fellow going to school, secondary school, there's a guy I remember, he was from England, and the people were making fuss, were, were really um, making a mockery out of him. Because everything he was saying was, let me tell you, when I was in England, when I was in England, and the people used to call him, no mama Langlite. No mama Langlite. These guys don't realize they're in a different place. You understand? You have to realize that you're not in England, you're not in America, you're in St. Lucia. You have to adapt. You have to adapt to what we have here. So some of them, we know some of the, some of the people, when they were in St. Lucia, they were not, they didn't want to work. But when they go overseas, they work workaholics. So you can't work to develop your country, but you can work to push America. But it's all good. But when you come here, don't criticize nothing we have here. All right, moving all along. We are, we are approaching Savans Bay area. There are some nice houses in this um, vicinity here. There are some nice houses around here. All right, people. So, you people in America, we appreciate you. You're working, you're helping your family in St. Lucia, that's good. I appreciate that. We appreciate that. But do not send guns to our country. Do not send guns. This is Savants Bay, you fought. Do not send guns here. Gun in guns in barrel kind of thing. Don't do that. Don't do that here. Because when you do that, you bring in crime in our country. You're increasing the murder rate in the country. In the country of your birth, you want to send guns down here. You were born in the country. You're living in America and you want to send guns to your country to destabilize your country? Eh? The left of that place is where Borai Beach, the old Borai Beach used to be. I consider all of her as you fought. We're not in the town yet, but all of her is you fought. Some people, some people say VA4, they pronounce it the, the French way, VA4. So that road in on the right, what's that called? I forgot the name of that place, you know. But Sagamena Hotel VA4, and Hotel VA4, places like, um, well, right now I'm trying not to remember the name of the place and I can't remember. But, um, yeah, I just forgot the name of the place, but so the right is where we have the sports stadium. And over many, they have, uh, they temporarily housed the, it was supposed to be a temporary, a short term arrangement where they bring the hospital at the stadium, but that has been a permanent thing. So it looked like for many, many, many years now, probably more than, more than 10 years, the stadium has been used by St. Jude hospital so they're constructing another St. Jude's and you know all the problems that we have had with this St. Jude in terms of different administration both UWB SLP in power coming in coming out 
and the St. Jude Hospital not completed. Millions of dollars in funds been, been received from overseas and other sources and no hospital. So, to the left is where the quarry is. That used to be called Quarry Products. Or something like that, that was the name. A lot of um, quarry products came from this place, man. Power in, uh, in times past. Yes, people. This is Viewfort. But we're not going into the Fort Town, we're going to the International Airport, the Ranora International Airport. That's where we're going to. I have done two videos on the Fort Town. You can check it out. So in a short while I'll be turning right to the hospital. Not to the hospital, to the place. Iranora oh. International Airport. So This is the place to the airport now. I'll reach a point where I'm not. I'll stop recording after a while. So basically I showed you the route from the valley from the Denry Valley to the airport, okay? 